All right. Yep. So we're recording now too. Looks good. Wait in for the presentation to start. There we go. All right. So, uh, Valerio, you should be able to to uh, talk. Can you? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we're good. Great. All right, so we're ready to get started. So um, welcome everyone to the start of the Datura and Avernia Streetscape um, uh, virtual charrette. This is our, our first uh, virtual open house on day one of the virtual charrette. And we wanna welcome everyone that's joining us either through our Zoom meeting or through Facebook Live. So welcome everyone. Um, we know that there's a lot going on right now uh, between the pandemic and some of the other events over the past um, um, week or so. And, um, you know, we just wanna recognize everything that's going on in the world and hopefully that through this process, we can all um, find some time to come together and um, think about how we can improve uh, downtown West Palm Beach. So thank you for your participation. Um, Valerio, before I get into my portion of the presentation, do you wanna share um, a few words from the city's perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, thank you everyone for joining, joining us tonight for day one of our very first virtual public open house. I'm Valerio Ricchio, and I'm the city transportation engineer and the project manager for the Avernia and Datura neighborhood improvements project. Tonight, uh, we look forward to gathering your comments, suggestions, and opinions related to the project. We are currently in the planning phase of the project, in which we are discussing and selecting you know, the best options to enhance and improve those two streets. I hope uh, you had the chance to provide some feedback already through the interactive survey on the project website. And I also hope uh, you managed to attend or will attend uh, our next virtual open studio sessions. Uh, in those sessions, uh, you, you can have the chance to follow and uh, comment on our planning team uh, brainstorming sessions. And uh, again, I would like to thank you very much for your interest and participation tonight. We look forward to working with you in improving downtown West Palm Beach. And uh, having said that, I uh, will pass the torch to Brad with our consulting team. He's going to be providing more detailed information about uh, tonight's virtual open house and his proceeding. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Valerio. Um, I don't think I introduced myself at the beginning, but my name is Brad Davis with Alta Planning and Design. I'm a principal with Alta. We are a national multidisciplinary planning and design firm that focuses on creating active communities. And so, um, We've been working in West Palm Beach for a while. We developed the uh, Downtown Mobility Master Plan. Um, I'm sure we worked with many of you that are, are joining and tuning in for this. And this is just an evolution of that project as well as some others to focus on transforming some of the streets uh, in downtown West Palm Beach to improve uh, quality of life. So the agenda for tonight, I'm uh, gonna give a project overview since we're just starting this project for, for many of you, just to give you an ex, uh, understanding of the scope and extent of the project. I'll go over 
the virtual charrette format. And then as a team, we're gonna go over some corridor concepts. And uh, tonight we were gonna do some polling, but we decided that instead of polling, we wanted to give just an opportunity to go over the kind of trade-offs, uh, give some time for people to digest the information, and then we'll come back um, tomorrow with some more refinements and to do some, some live polling to get some, some feedback. And then we'll conclude with just some additional information about how you can continue to stay involved uh, this week in particular. So what is the Datura and Avernia Streetscape Project? This is a city of West Palm Beach project, as Valeria mentioned, led by the community, you, uh, with support by a design team, which is led by Alta, as I mentioned, we are also working in partnership with Ecosistema Urbana. Um, many of you have seen their work previously in downtown West Palm Beach for the Open Shore competition that reimagined um, what the shorefront might look like, downtown waterfront, as well as the Banyan Garage and what some of the alleys um, might look like. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, but really the focus is on uh, using this opportunity to generate ideas and to figure out how we can um, reimagine uh, Datura and Avernia Street. So what is the scope of this project? So really it's anything within the public right-of-way between the existing buildings. And so that includes both the streetscape as well as potentially some architectural and vertical elements such as um, art installations or other types of architectural features that might be attached to say the, um, uh, some of the municipal garages uh, as one example. The extent of the project is from Quadrille to Flagler um, and it includes Datura and Avernia Street. And while our final recommendations will focus just on the changes that will happen along Datura and Avernia Street. We're thinking uh, more holistically about how downtown can be improved. So we'll be thinking about connections along Dixie and Olive. We'll be thinking about the alleyways in this study area. We'll be thinking about the connections to Fern Street, uh, Clematis Street, west of the railroad tracks and to the waterfront as a part of this project. So why is this a project? So as I mentioned, we led the downtown mobility master plan. Uh, it was adopted in 2018 uh, that went through a uh, pretty robust public involvement process that included a charrette um, developing concepts for Okeechobee Boulevard. And through that process, we identified a series of projects, policies, programs, and an action plan that together will guide investments in streets and the transportation system over the next 20 years in downtown West Palm Beach. And through that process, one of the projects that we identified was uh, project number 13, Datura and Avernia Street. And we actually broke these into two pairs, uh, Datura and Avernia Street east of the railroad tracks, which is going to be the first phase that we're looking at. And then there's also a separate project for Datura and Avernia Street that is west of the railroad tracks that will uh, connect to uh, Tamarin. Uh, the city has also gone through other recent planning efforts, which includes Open Shore, as I mentioned, as well as the West Palm Beach Public Realm Action Plan to really look at ways public space can be activated and enhanced to improve the, the health and livelihood um, in West Palm Beach. And you've probably all experienced some of the recent transformations, uh, Clematis Street and Rosemary Avenue being the two most recent. And as I mentioned, Datura and Avernia Street is the next in line to um, 
go through the planning process. And what we'll be doing is identifying uh, both short-term and long-term strategies that can be implemented, some incrementally, uh, some on a temporary basis potentially, and then ultimately working towards a long-term uh, solution. In terms of project schedule, we're still at the beginning of the, the process. Uh, this spring, we went through um, um, some work analyzing existing conditions and what the opportunities and constraints are in the area, doing the kind of technical background work that we typically do. Now we're into the concept development phase, which is where you all uh, are really needed. So uh, over the course of this week in particular, we'll be getting input from the community, testing ideas, getting feedback, refining them, and ultimately uh, coming to a shared vision for the future. After this week, we will refine those concepts into a draft plan, come back uh, to the community to present it. And then based on feedback, then we'll finalize plans into a series of short and long-term strategies uh, that will also start to identify funding, um, phasing, those kinds of things. The main source of information for this project is gonna be at the project website. That's gonna be our central repository for meetings, uh, meeting updates, um, videos, uh, recordings like this one, which we are recording now. Uh, you can connect to the interactive survey and you can also uh, submit feedback uh, and input using the contact form. Uh, we also have under the resources tab have posted some links to some of those previous planning studies such as the downtown mobility master plan and open shore uh, study. So virtual shred. So the virtual shred is taking place this week. Uh, today, Monday is the start. Uh, we'll be working tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday through Thursday, and we'll be culminating with a work in progress presentation on Thursday evening from 5 to 6 p.m. And you can find everything at the project website at the virtual shred page. We'll be updating it daily with a summary of information of what we've heard, what we've developed, um, recordings of all of the public meetings um, so you can stay up to date and participate even if you can't attend all of the meetings. So what is a charrette? A charrette is typically an in-person, collaborative, uh, multi-day, multidisciplinary um, uh, activity where we work with you all, the community, and us as a, as a design team to generate ideas about what you want to see improved in your community, in your neighborhood, on your particular street. And for this project, we're focusing on Datura and Avernia Street. Uh, we've already been generating ideas from the interactive community survey, and I'll share more about that in a few moments. Uh, but typically these are done in person and given the current state of um, the pandemic, uh, we shifted to moving everything virtually. And our hope is that we can mimic as much as possible the uh, spirit of a typical charrette, but do it virtually so everyone can stay um, uh, healthy through this process, but still provide feedback in a meaningful way. Um, so these are just some of the other images from the. Um, uh, charrette we did for Okeechobee Boulevard, but the idea is that instead of us kind of working as a team on the ground, um, uh, we'll all be doing it virtually. We have folks in, um, uh, in Madrid, uh, in, here in West Palm, uh, in Atlanta, Charlotte, and, uh, and Minnesota as well. So the shred process, and we'll be following the same process uh, virtually, is kicking off today and having a series of, of opportunities to participate, provide feedback over the course of these four days that will culminate, like I mentioned, with the work in progress presentation. You can find the full schedule at the virtual shred 
page of the project website, as I mentioned, in addition to uh, these virtual open house meetings, we will be doing virtual open studios. Uh, typically at a charrette, we give an opportunity for you all to stop by um, when you have time to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, to share ideas, and to give some transparency to the design process, and you can see us working. Uh, since we're working virtually, we are going to be uh, hosting virtual open studios, which is really us sharing our screens and you being able to listen in to our design team uh, working throughout the day. The, we already had two of these opportunities today. There'll be two more. They're all at the same time each day, uh, tomorrow and on Wednesday. Uh, in the morning, they're from 11 to 12 p.m., and in the afternoon, they're from 2 to 3 p.m. In addition, we're having some targeted uh, stakeholder meetings. We already had one with some folks from the business community today. Tomorrow, we'll be talking with uh, some of the neighborhood representatives or property owners or HOA uh, representatives from some of the residential buildings along the corridor to get their perspective about Dictor and Avernia Street. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, we'll be meeting with different agencies and departments uh, from the city or other um, entities that may be involved in some form of implementation to start talking about some of the technical uh, requirements and coordination that needs to take place to um, implement the concepts that we develop. And then, like I mentioned, on Thursday, we'll be finishing with the work in progress presentation. So what have we heard so far? So we've had an interactive online survey up uh, for the last two weeks. So far, we've gotten 113 survey responses. Uh, you can still participate uh, or share with others. We, we want as much feedback as possible, and this will be live uh, over the, the course of, of this week. Um, and we'll be using the information that we get to inform the concepts that we develop and where we put our emphasis uh, along the corridor. So this is just some of what we've heard so far. We asked, what is your connection to the study area? Do you live in West Palm? Do you work downtown? Do you own a business? Um, and you know, the majority of people that have responded so far live or work uh, downtown. Some folks own a business. Uh, and downtown. And I think this other one, this 4% was, do you own property? We also asked respondents, where do you live? Just to get a sense of where we're getting feedback from. Um, almost half of folks live in downtown West Palm Beach. Uh, the rest um, uh, live in West Palm, but maybe not in downtown. And then uh, the remainder are from outside of, of West Palm. In terms of uh, age, uh, we haven't had anyone under the age of 19 respond yet. Then the majority of folks are between 19 and 65, but we have had some respondents over the age of uh, 65 as well. And we also want to get a sense of how familiar people were with previous planning efforts. And so uh, a lot of respondents were involved with the downtown um, mobility plan. Um, which isn't surprising given the amount of, of, of outreach and participation opportunities there were throughout that project. Uh, so that's great. And there are some folks that have been involved with the Clematis or the um, you know, Public Space Action Plan. And for those of you that weren't familiar with those, as I mentioned, we have links to those on the resource uh, page of the project website. We also asked, what blocks do you want to invest in? So everyone got $10 to spend during their survey and they had to spend all $10 um, as a part of this question. And I think it's pretty interesting that for the most part, there is pretty even um, distribution of investment. The one that received the, the most kind of dollars was the block along Avernia from Olive to Narcissus. Um, and I think Avernia got a little bit more in terms of investment, but a pretty evenly split. And so that helps us as a design team to know that there's not one particular part of the corridor that we need to um, put a lot of attention on. It's spread throughout the corridor.
we also asked not only where you want to spend your money, but what you want to spend your money on. The question was, what do you want to invest in along Teichura and Avernia Street? And the topics were mobility and accessibility, culture and social activation, economic development, environment, health, and climate comfort, and then art and installation. And you know, the two that really came to the, the fore were mobility and accessibility, um, be that all modes, or environment, health, and climate comfort. And those, you know, having gone through the process with the mobility master plan, those responses, you know, I think are pretty consistent with, with, um, with what we heard during that process. There were a lot of folks that wanted a more balanced transportation system that was focused on walking, biking, transit, uh, less on driving. And in terms of environment and comfort, people wanted to you know, definitely have um, more shade opportunities and have it be more comfortable to both um, move about, but also uh, linger and socialize uh, in downtown along the city streets and public spaces. So we're using that information, like I said, to start to develop some of the corridor concepts. And for um, our work today, we focused on three different concepts. One was looking at more or less keeping the street as it is with the street center line and, and curb lines more or less where they are and what kind of minor modifications can we make. Uh, another concept was kind of totally rethinking where the um, uh, center line is of the street, um, maybe having uh, no curbs at all, like along Clematis or Rosemary, uh, but still keeping it two way. And then the third concept that we were testing today, and the last one that you'll hear about, is converting um, Deitura and Avernia Street to a one-way pair. Um, and we'll talk about what some of the considerations are and uh, drivers for different ideas um, for each corridor um, right now. So first up is Antonella. Hi, thank you, Brad. Great. So we'll let you share your screen and. Um... Yes, can you see my screen? Yes, great. Okay, so we, um, we start focusing on a general uh, strategy for the two corridors. And at the same time, we start analyzing one of, of the blocks. So we start with the Avernia. Uh, corridors and uh, more in de detail we were working on this uh, sector between Dixie and Olive. So the existing condition uh, as we can see here uh, is um, as we can see <laughs> more in detail in this section is that we have a two, um, two uh, way uh, with a double lane and parking on both sides of the streets, uh, while uh, sidewalks are quite narrow. And here we have some pictures of uh, the buildings uh, abutting this street. As we can see, uh, one of these main buildings, like dominating the landscape, is this uh, big garage. While on the other side, there are more uh, small buildings with two-story buildings and even uh, a nice uh, terrace uh, with a bar and a restaurant that is occupying part of this uh, of the street. So we work in this scenario of uh, considering more or less leaving the existing situation as it is, um, introducing uh, like small interventions and what we propose is to uh, expand the existing uh, sidewalk and occupying part of the space that is currently used as a parking area in order to uh, foster intervention as this one of this uh, uh, restaurant terrace and uh, even in considering the possibility to introduce new parklets and occupying parts of this uh, parking for other social uses. 
and the fact that we could not really uh, transform the existing uh, sections of the streets also um, invite us also to uh, introduce new intervention even in the facade of the building and more in detail we were like um, curious about the opportunity that this uh, garage building allows us to provide a new atmosphere and creates a new uh, urban streetscape. So within our um, proposal, there is also the possibility to transform even this um, vertical intervention area, uh, introducing new uh, vegetation, not only big trees along the streets, but also uh, along this uh, building, for instance. And uh, regarding the uh, transformation of the streets, um, we are also proposing to introduce some crossing uh, between the two sides of the streets with light interventions as uh, painting and you know, creating this kind of graphic patterns. So by the end, and we have this kind of uh, references that inspired us. So there are very uh, quick and uh, high results uh, yet low budget um, intervention that could really create a new atmosphere and transform the streets. So we are also envisioning the possibility to uh, cover parts of the street with this uh, canopy, providing new, uh, providing shadow and climatic comfort, especially during summer. Regarding the street section, well, we uh, design different solutions and uh, so this is the, the existing uh, section as it looks like now with a lot of space uh, for cars, let's say, for both um, vehicle transportation and uh, parking. And this is uh, more or less as we are imagining that. So the idea is to gain uh, part of this, uh, side, uh, this parking area for um, sidewalks and terraces even with uh, a new uh, bike lane. So we are working on these uh, different scenarios for the moment. That's it. Great, thank you, Antonella. You're welcome. All right. Next up is Donnie, and you are going to go over the uh, two-way shared street concept. Yep. Sounds good. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes, you're good. Great. Um, so I'm going to piggyback on the, the initial analysis by Antonella um, and introduce the, the concept of kind of a, a two-way street um, that looks at what a full curb redesign could be. So um, it's not beholden to uh, the current curbs uh, that are there at all. Um, so things like uh, curbless streets or potentially roll curbs or short curbs um, were all things we were beginning to explore um, here. Uh, and I'll just give a quick overview of um, kind of what the Datura, um, or what the Avernia from Dixie to Olive block, um, what we saw is some of the opportunities using this, this concept. Um, like I said, it would maintain two-way travel, um, which is definitely a plus for maintaining existing function of the road. Um, but since we're looking at moving curbs, we looked at the north side of the street, which has um, angled parking stalls, um, which it's unique to this block within our study area. Um, and it takes up a lot of space, so it's understandable why some of the other blocks don't have it. Um, so we think there's a, a real opportunity to kind of use some of that space. Uh, and instead of using an angled parking, selectively using parallel parking to create more space that can be dedicated to pedestrian or commercial functions. Um, another key thing in this area is uh, there's the parking garage, um, so, uh, as Antonella was talking about uh, facade treatments, uh, there may also be the potential for uh, future liner commercial um, in this uh, 
parking garage. And so we explored what additional commercial on the street um, might change or uh, induce for the streetscape. Um, Brad mentioned we're looking beyond just the um, core streets and looking at the broader study area. So this um, block has the potential to connect to the alley that is uh, just south of it. Um, so we wanted to maybe explore, well, in addition to a mid-block crossing, which would be very nice for people to get both sides, to commercial on both sides of the street, it would also be really nice to get people to the alley if that's a pedestrian, future pedestrian network. Um, and kind of as, as it was already said, uh, there, there's already huge demand here. There's the Pokey restaurant here at the western corner, and then there's the brewery um, just in from it, and those both clearly have a lot of demand for uh, outdoor dining, currently the brewery um, kind of put temporary things up in the street. Um, so we really wanted to piggyback on what we're already seeing happening on the street uh, to try and further support those commercial activities. Um, I think one last thing um, kind of here at the intersection of Dixie, um, we noticed that uh, there's an existing plaza that seems to be a little bit underutilized um, with the potential of future commercial on the north side. Uh, we wanted to look at maybe this plaza could be uh, amended with additional seating, umbrellas, shade structures to create more uh, dining culture, community space uh, on this block. A um, uh, few takeaways of this concept. Um, the benefits, uh, there's a radically increased space for shade trees and landscape to help reduce temperatures. Uh, especially on the north side of the block. Um, second big benefit is improved sidewalk space, more outdoor dining opportunities, and overhead lighting to attract more people. Um, so that's, that's gonna be, those two in combination really create a, a comfortable and, and an enjoyable pedestrian experience. Um, and then the using kind of more of a narrower two-way street um, allows us to slow down traffic, but still maintain existing traffic functions. Um, and then the trade-offs are, uh, we did look at um, exploring removing parking in certain places and selectively locating parking. So this uh, shows fewer on-street parking sp spots that are currently there. Um, this concept shows cyclists and cars sharing the road. Um, it's imagining a slower street, so we believe that this would be a safe experience, but it still does create them using the same facility, uh, more of a share uh, And then this concept, as comes with it, uh, requires full curb-to-curb -curb reconstruction because we're fully reimagining. So I'm just gonna jump up to show uh, what a before and after street section might look like. Uh, on the top, you see what is the existing section, if you can imagine. Um, over here, we've got the, the brewery or the pokey restaurant. Um, there's a narrow space for trees and a, an adequate, but oftentimes too narrow sidewalk. Um, then, oh, I apologize, that's the opposite side of the street. Uh, then angled parking, um, that, which takes up about 20 feet, and then uh, lane of traffic in each direction, and then parallel parking on the opposite side takes up an additional eight feet. And then you have, again, uh, an adequate sidewalk, um, a little bit narrow with uh, space for Street tree. So this improved concept uh, going from left to right looks to um, increase the amount of uh, space for both pedestrian and current or future commercial activity. So it looks at adding maybe an additional row of trees as well as um, more of an amenity or seating space. Um, two slightly narrower um, through lanes that can function as sharrows. Um, and parking, uh, parallel parking, again, an additional eight feet, which allows for a wider sidewalk on both sides. Um, the parking is fairly flexible, so um, the parking can switch sides as needed. Um, if there's a, a commercial establishment that has it, maybe it would be good to locate some parallel parking in front of that. Um, whereas on another side, there might be a parking garage, in which case that may not need parallel parking in front of it. So um, we felt like this was a, a flexible concept to explore. Um, so if we shift over to the visualization, um, you can see the existing street above. I'm going to just zoom into this, hope it's not too jumpy. Um, so 
this is the existing street. As you can see, it's very, feels very wide um, in terms of asphalt and concrete. Um, you don't really get a sense of uh, scale because everything's wide and tall and big. Um, so part of this experiment was to look at how we could create more um, texture, more color, more landscape, and more opportunity to feel comfortable in space. So our proposed um, looks radically different. So looking at bringing in overhead lighting um, as an opportunity to both um, create kind of a, a comfortable overhead, um, but also add a lot of like nightlife elements, um, bringing in additional um, trees. You can see on the left-hand side, we're showing some awnings, um, which again, further support uh, commercial street frontages, really help the continuity of the street. Um, and uh, potentially additioning additional commercial infill at the parking garage. Um, we're looking at possibly one or possibly two rows of trees in certain locations to accommodate both a sidewalk, which is here on the furthest left area, or um, more of a, a seating zone for people to dine out uh, in a safe location that's not a street. Um, but you can see behind, uh, still opportunity for this planting area to, to come and go to allow for parking in some locations and not others. Um, and then uh, in the middle, you can see this yellow bar going across. We believe that was kind of the, the opportunity for mid-block crossing um, and alley access. Uh, and then shifting over the right side of the street, similar concepts, bringing in a little more landscape, widening that sidewalk up um, and having intermittent planting and parking to further support um, a slow street that has a lot of urban cooling elements. Um, and then just to, to, to finish up, a couple examples of, of images that were really evocative and kind of capture some of the spirit that we wanted to show in this one. Um, it's a street in uh, Montreal, uh, really strong overhead plane, but really dynamic, makes you want to walk there. Um, and then another kind of experience, this one as opposed to uh, overhead lighting or sculpture. This one really looks at the, the power of vegetation, the power of trees to create uh, a really cool and inviting environment to sit a while, dine, um, and really enjoy the space. Um, so that's all I have to share. I'm going to throw it back, uh, or I'm going to throw it to Emily, who's going to share the one-way um, street concept. Great. Uh, thank you, Donnie. Um, so like Donnie said, I am, or my team was testing the one-way conversion of Datura and Ivernia Street today. Um, and that, the way we imagine that would work is they would be a pair. Um, so Datura would be converted to an eastbound road and Ivernia would be a westbound one-way road. Uh, so there are some great pluses to converting uh, the street. As you can see, this is the existing cross-section underneath. And if we just have one lane of traffic and if we even keep the parking lane, we can still move the curbs in a lot. Uh, and create a lot of pedestrian space and room for landscaped areas um, and room for activation. So here is a section that we started with um, and we wanted to just hit all of the complete streets elements to start with. We wanted to make sure that there was dedicated bike space because we had all of this extra right of way. And then we also focused on providing shade for pedestrians uh, on both sides and particularly on the side, the south side with the brewery and other commercial businesses where they may want to have outdoor dining or other types of activation. And this section was created using the most constrained part of the Dixie to Olive block of Avernia. Uh, so here is our quick rendering of what that could look like. Um, the brewery is actually behind this tree here. This is the parking garage 
back here. And we are facing west. Um, so as you can see, the pace, the space dedicated for to just vehicular movement has narrowed quite a bit and it allows for a lot of room on both sides for a pedestrian through zone, for a planted strip in between a bike lane, um, and then another curb outside of the bike lane that um, also includes some parallel parking bays. And then we've kind of formalized the outdoor dining that the brewery has set up in the street um, and placed them on, kind of, it kind of creates a little plaza space on, um, on this south side. Uh, I think it's more, it's at least 20 feet here. And we also explored a couple of options for kind of having some fun with some of the curbed, pla curbed parts of the road. Um, you could put public art in between the street and the bike facility or something with light or plants as we are showing here. Um, and this is just an example of a bike lane separated from pedestrian space with frontage. Um, we're also going to explore probably some curbless options. We are looking at just curved options for today, um, but this one-way conversion could also be in a curbless configuration as well. Um, and there's a lot you can do with that extra space, a lot of activation and um, programming. Um, some of the trade-offs that we thought of for the one-way circulation was there would be potentially longer distances to travel and circulate if you were in a car finding parking. Um, we think that wayfinding is crucial to kind of combating this um, so people know where to go to find public parking and it's an easy loop around um, hopefully not long, I don't think we have to go longer than a block to loop around um, if you can't find a parking spot in the first try. Um, there's also a concern for a potential impact on businesses, um, but streetscape activation and of course wayfinding so that people know where to go to find the restaurants, to find shopping or the uh, waterfront can help, you know, combat any impact that one way vehicular travel could have on businesses. Um, it, I guess our feeling is if the walk is interesting and the walk is exciting and pretty and shaded, um, people will find their way and, and keep going down the corridor. Uh, some of the benefits of the one-way conversion, I mentioned a couple of them. It does allow for the maximum pedestrian space on the road um, and that extra space means that we can integrate really meaningful green space and it doesn't necessarily have to be linear to fit in a specific or a tighter space. Um, there's an opportunity for it to meander or for there to be bigger areas in some places. Um, it allows for the most flexibility in maintaining on street parking because there's only one uh, flow of traffic. Uh, you, you have a little bit more flexibility of where you put those parking bays. Um, we think it'll be a little bit more manageable during special events, make it easier to close off streets. Um, it integrates nicely with the existing one-way streets that cross these two corridors um, and kind of creates a nice loop. And we also narrowing that vehicular space um, just kind of it can encourage slower speeds and create some visual friction when you have trees um, and curve closer together when you're driving down the road. So it doesn't encourage people to drive faster necessarily. They expect pedestrians to be in the area. But that's just some of the concepts we're looking at for a one-way conversion. Um, we think that there's a lot you can do with the programming, um, but that's all we have for today on that. So I'll pass it back to Brad. Great, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. 
And, you know, one of the, I think, consistent themes here with all three of these was kind of focusing on the mobility component and the climate and comfort component. We're starting kind of leading with those two key things uh, to focus on, get the uh, concept and, and network um, sorted and set and then start to refine it along each uh, corridor, which we'll be doing over the next few days. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention too is that while the blocks between uh, Quadrille and Narcissus um, are kind of more consistent in use, um, the blocks between Narcissus and Flagler are a lot more dynamic around the amphitheater and connections to the waterfront with the public space. There are a lot more uh, events and activities that take place and require a lot more um, programming and flexibility um, for the street, um, some of which you know, is maybe prohibited a little bit now. And so we are testing those ideas uh, as well. And I was wondering, you know, maybe Donnie, do you have a, um, one of the renderings that you did today just to kind of illustrate you know some of the thinking that we're doing um, for that portion of the corridor that's slightly different than the other portions yeah one second let me pull that up Are you able to see that? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, so this was um, the block between, uh, this is Daytura between um, Narcissus and Flagler. Um, so on the right, you've got the concert venue in the park. On the left, you've got um, two businesses that see a lot of um, pedestrian traffic. Um, so uh, this one was looking at something a bit more radical. This one was looking at uh, more of a pedestrianized street, one with uh, either limited or no vehicular traffic in some opportunity, in some circumstances. Um, and it looks to create a, kind of like a flexible space that can be adapted to a variety of different needs, whether it's there's a concert happening and you need spillover for staging or, or, uh, or more fans to sit or uh, it could be a, a normal hot summer day and people want a place in the shade to um, enjoy some food from one of the restaurants along there um, or it could be a food truck festival um, so we we're just playing around with ideas on how to create a very flat um, but uh, inviting and cooled down and flexible space um, that really invites people to walk through it great any additional things you want me to touch on brad while i'm here no, I think that's good. I just wanted to, um, you know, share that concept and idea. And we're, you know, thinking through, you know, things, big events like the boat show and then the smaller events as well, in addition to uh, accommodating, you know, daily life um, in downtown. So, great. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen just to cover a few housekeeping items um, and ways you can continue to stay involved. So tomorrow's agenda, as I mentioned, uh, we have a morning virtual open studio from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can watch um, via Facebook Live on our, our Facebook page for the project or you can um, uh, log into the Zoom meeting and you can find that information on the virtual shred page, uh, as I mentioned. Same thing for the afternoon. Again, we'll be doing a virtual open studio from 2 to 3 p.m. And we'll be back again, uh, same time, uh, 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, for the day two virtual open house.
Again, as I mentioned previously, uh, the interactive online survey is still open and we want as many people taking that as possible. So we have a, a good cross section from the community in terms of, of input and interests and values. And you can find the link to the survey on the, uh, at the project website. If you want to sign up for updates about the project or to uh, provide a specific uh, comment um, about the corridor, you can go to the contact um, page of the project website and provide your information uh, there. And lastly, as I mentioned, uh, we'll be connecting with everyone on, on Facebook through the projects uh, Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Datura Avernia. We have all of the information to participate via Zoom uh, at all the different um, events associated with the virtual strut this week, uh, as well as connecting to Facebook Live, as I mentioned, um, on the uh, main page of the um, uh, Facebook page for the project. So. Thank you everyone uh, for participating and listening and we look forward to uh, hearing more from you um, in the coming week. Thank you.